20 minutes past nine this Thursday morning. Now, Alliance Ireland has been a proud sponsor of Paralympics Ireland since 2010 and has been a partner with Ellen Keane for the last five years. And I'm delighted to say Alliance Paralympic brand ambassador Ellen Keane is with us now. Ellen, good morning to you. How are you? Good morning. I'm good. I'm a little bit tired, but that's okay. <laughs> I, I saw some uh, fairly spectacular scenes on the seafront in Clontarf last night where you were driving around and there were horns blaring and there were people out with tricolours. It was your official homecoming last night. Fairly sensational stuff to live through. What was it actually like to be in the middle of it? Oh my God, it was madness. Um, I I was completely unexpecting it, to be honest. Like I knew it was coming and I I was aware that like, people were messaging me saying they were kind of come but to see like complete strangers and hundreds of complete strangers just standing out there clapping beeping horns cheering me on it was it was so lovely especially having been in Tokyo where there was no crowds there was no one in the stands I didn't have that experience of getting on the podium I could hear my teammates but our team is so small that it didn't really have the same effect as as yesterday so when we were driving around as well um I, I got a bit emotional I'm not gonna lie <laughs> I was at times I was like am I crying I I don't know but no it was so special so special uh Kelly Harrington had a great line about the, the last mile being pretty lonely when you're trying to achieve anything and I'm sure it's been like that for you over the last while in particular because of the COVID delay and uh, and everything that came with that in getting ready for the Paralympic Games. So on reflection, what has that whole weirdness been like for you? It has, it has been really, really neat, but at the same time, I um, had so much support and up and my like, athletes have been back me for so long and they they were still there even after the uncertainty. And it just that little a bit and it's all going to be okay you never really felt that alone because everyone was kind of ground hoping and wishing you well um, I'm, I'm lucky enough as well because my boyfriend is a uh, so he's college's uh coach from us and i've been going through this together as well so he came home a little early um, and he was literally like nobody understands <laughs> so now that I'm home and we're together it's actually like we understand what's going on and it is a really really lonely kind of feeling when you come home as well but because it was my fourth games I I was aware of it and I knew it was going to happen and I wasn't surprised by kind of the come down feeling um, and I think that's something that maybe first time Olympians or Paralympians need to understand need to know that it's okay to be feeling really really low because it, you have been training maybe your whole life maybe just the past five years but just for that moment to get there and it's as over, it's over so quickly as well and then you kind of have to be like where do I go from here but I think it's just important my plan now is just to to relax and feel whatever I'm feeling um, and I think that's just a really important thing to do That's knowledge essentially that you have acquired from uh, post Beijing and, and everywhere in between yeah yeah and that's the thing as well i i think people when they go to their first games they have all these hopes and ambitions and it's it's hard to actually get to a games and even get a personal best because it's all just so new and so it's so big and i know there are some people who didn't have performances that they wanted to have but that's where like experience comes in and now next time around it might not be as difficult and you might be able to manage it a little bit more and there's just no way of really as much as you have support in the background nobody really knows what it's like until you get there and then that that experience that you have you bank that in your mind so the next time you go you'll be a little bit more prepared mentally um does an event like last night where there is an outpouring that like a physical outpouring a manifestation of people's love for you does that help with the come down or is it actually kind of almost more pronounced? Um, I I don't know how to answer that. I guess it was just so emotional for me yesterday because like I knew how much this medal mean, meant to me because uh, like I've been, li it's my life that I've been living. It's my fourth games and the fourth time that I went and I finally got that gold. But I didn't realize how much it actually meant to the people of Clontarf. Um, and I saw it yesterday, so I, it just made me so proud to be able to do that. And 
like in the back of my mind, I think I had such like a mental block for a long time um, and I have overcome that. And now I the possibilities are endless for me. So my mind is now going to Paris and my mind is like, what can I achieve in Paris now? And I think that kind of helps as well with Come Down as well, knowing that I want to do it again and knowing that there is more and I just need to figure out and make a plan of how to get more out of myself. That was pretty quick because I, I was there at some point in your life a doubt about whether or not Tokyo is going to happen for you where had you wavered in the past and said okay I've had my experience about this I'm going to go off and do whatever it is that I'm going to do after my sports career like um not so much that Tokyo wasn't going to happen um it was more that I was in a rut and I think any sports person can relate to this that um when you've been at something for so long uh you kind of get to a point where you might might improve for a very very long time and i think that's something that maybe younger people coming into the sport need to realize that you're getting loads of personal best you're improving all the time but then you'll get to the point where it's not gonna improve anymore and you need to figure out mentally how to get the next percentage out of you um and i think i was just stuck for a very long time because mentally uh i had so many races where i was just swimming the exact same time in and around 122 123 and i knew that i was capable of swimming faster and for tokyo it was kind of like if i can't do this in tokyo then i'll probably retire um and i did think about that i did think like i'm not going to spend years of my life training and getting stronger and feeling faster and not actually improving when it when it counts um and it not showing that i've i've been training hard so when i actually got to tokyo um like i knew medals medals i was aware that medals were there and um, but for me it was like i just want to go and do it do the job get the job done show people how fast i am and um, and i think that confidence going into tokyo really really helped and i kind of blocked out all the the silliness of all the frills that come with the games and i kind of just i kind of just wanted to get the job done and even the few days beforehand when we had been tapering down and resting loads i literally and people kept asking me oh are you nervous are you excited and i honestly i was like i'm just bored like i just want to get in and do what i know i'm capable of doing so in the heat when i went to 121 yeah, I was, I got a PB. I was content with that, that first morning swim. It's always harder to swim fast in the morning. And um, so I was happy with the morning swim, but I was like, I know I can go 119. And um, I knew that despite racing Sophie, <laughs> even like a few days before the race, when I saw the entries uh, and I saw Sophie, I literally was like, oh, I'm so afraid because she is a nine time, nine time gold medalist. This was gonna be her her chance to try and get a tenth gold medal, um, and I was po possibly the one who was gonna get in the way. And I knew how close the race was as well. Um, before I don't know, just for the final, I just was so confident that I had done everything that I possibly could do, and I just felt so prepared. And I think if you go to a games knowing that you have left no stone unturned, then whatever happens happens. And that's literally the last thing that I told myself before I walked out was, no matter what happens, I'll be okay. Did you know months out that you were in that form and that you were you were on that trajectory, or did that realization come pretty close? Even kind of on the morning when you do the the PB, you're like, okay, everything that I told myself was true, or did you know it had been true on the basis of everything you had done in preparation? I think I knew it, I knew it was true for a long time um, and that's why I didn't want to go to the European Championships in May as well because I didn't want other people to know <laughs> and I kind of wanted to keep it to myself and I I kind of thought that if I if other people knew then I might start to feel the pressure a bit more I might start to have the self doubts but like my team knew, my coach knew, even like some of my athletes were like, I've never seen you like so in the zone and so ready and prepared. Um, and like that, hearing that from your fellow teammates, it gives you so much confidence. And it's it's a lovely thing to hear that, that they also see it and they also feel it. So having that environment and being in that environment definitely helped 
in Tokyo just to kind of keep cool and not panic. And I, I think that's kind of what I've done in the past is I've nearly heard what people expect of me and I've been too afraid to do it because I don't know, maybe it was a fear of failure or um, I could just feel the pressure and I didn't know how to deal with the pressure, but even like the lead up to the the hundred brush stroke, I just came off social media. I just didn't want any outside influence because I was so confident in what I could do. Um, and yeah, it, I, I think just the confidence leading in and knowing that I was in the shape for a very, very long time was, was really reassuring. So what, what changed from a psychological perspective to give you the freedom to do that? Honestly, I think it was, I know how like the pandemic and not being able to race and train was was really difficult for me but i think the time away from racing and away from expectation and away from my own want to to swim a certain time i just kind of gave myself a break that i never had before i was constantly constantly racing constantly competing um, and I, since I was since I was thirteen, so that was like twelve years of just constantly going and constantly expecting to swim a certain time um, and not doing it. So to have that time off and to have that that step away from racing, it kind of gave me a bit of perspective to realize that it's just a pool. <laughs> you just need to dive in and get from one point to the other as quickly as you can. Whatever is going on in the background doesn't matter. Just focus on what you can control and I think there was a lot of things in the background as well that I couldn't control but I was focusing on those things and I just decided to to forget about it and I think that's a lesson going forward now that I have definitely learned from Tokyo that the, does the control control the controllables and I know lots of people say that and I've said that before in the past but now I really really know what that means and even even at night time like I'd go to bed I text everyone being at like nine o'clock saying I'm coming off my phone. I'd turn off my phone and then I would just chill out for an hour and then I go to sleep. And it was just those little things that I was doing and I was in control of. And they were also giving me confidence knowing that I'm going to have a great sleep now because I've come off my phone and I've done all this. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's, that's really all the little things, right. I knew I was doing all the little things, right. So on the day of the race, I was like, there's nothing more for me to do. Just do it. Every half-assed coach of every team in the world says control the controllables, but actually I'm not sure they live it or they know what it means or, you know, it's great to have these aphorisms that you spit out of people, but having lived that high performance life and having been through the experience that you have over the last uh, 12 years, uh, it's a fairly amazing skill set and bank of experience that you've built up. I know you're obviously yeah. interested in a, a career in the media, but are you, have you thought about a career in high performance after uh, Paris as well because it, it seems like that journey that you've been on is it's not unique but it's certainly your ability to communicate it the way you've just communicated it this morning you could inject that into we had James Gale on talking about Galway hurling you could inject it into any intercounty setup you could inject it into any individual like is this part of your life that you're ready to impart that wisdom with other people um yeah like I I think oh I think I'm gone. I'm no, we're, yeah, we still got you. Oh, it, it literally jumped. Um, I, I do really, really enjoy it. I, I do really enjoy the high performance environment and the lifestyle. But I think, and I think for a long time as well, I kind of knew what it, what, what, I kind of knew what it was, but I had never lived it. So anytime I did a talk or people wanted to hear about my swimming, like I would always talk more about like my experience as a person with a disability rather than my sport because I kind of felt like I hadn't nailed it yet and I hadn't understood it yet so I'm not going to stand up and talk about what other people should be doing when I haven't gotten there yet and now that I've finally gotten there I almost feel like it ha there was no other way for it to end and now that I've finally gotten there I'm I am excited to share my story I am excited to maybe make a difference to people um so yeah I do I really would maybe perhaps go down that road but I'm not finished yet. I'm, there's still so much more in me. And now that I've nailed it and I know what I'm what I'm capable of when I really, really focus, um I, I'm quite excited for Paris to see what I'm what I'm capable of there.
yeah, it's going to be an amazing. Like, and the fact that it's coming around so quick in Olympic cycles. I mean, three years is still three years, but uh, it is actually pretty quick. One of the best things that uh, you know uh, that we always get thrown at us is when we're talking about stuff, and particularly if it's football or if it's whatever. The, the show us your medals texts come in pretty quick, and the the old uh, the old pundits who did play the game. If you've ever got an opinion that they disagree with, they're like, "Oh, show us your medal." You now will be able to show everybody your medals. Can you show us your medal today? You've got it with you, I think. I do. It is. <laughs> That's pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet, and it's also really, really heavy, um, and it's really shiny. Like I don't think the medals from Rio were this shiny, or maybe just because it's new. Um, it is a very special medal, and I, I honestly, even in in Tokyo itself, like I, I hadn't really reacted, and I hadn't really realized what I did, and I think I had been talking to one of the the Kiwi boys and obviously he would have been a teammate of Sophie and it was him saying I don't think you realize what you've done and I was like what what do you mean I don't think you realize what you've done and he was like nobody beats Sophie very few people beat Sophie and you beat Sophie and I was like oh <laughs> that was kind of when it kind of sunk in and then even on the podium hearing that I was the Paralympic champion it wasn't even the gold medal it was the Paralympic champion that kind of got me going and uh the difference I think that this medal is is going to make um, in terms of growing the profile of Paralympics even more in Ireland, like Clontarf put up that. So so the logo for the Paralympics is called the Agitos, the symbol. Um, not a lot of people would confuse it with the Olympic rings. So even they could say Paralympics, but they'll put the Olympic rings up. And in Clontarf, they put a flag up of the Agitos, and that <laughs> that got me going as well because I was like that was that's for me like that I'm doing that and I'm just so proud that I am able to do that and maybe inspire a few kids along the way to get involved in para sport yeah look I think that's definitely part of it um I don't know if you you saw the cover of the Irish Times where uh it was it might have been Kelly Harrington it might have been you it might have been Leona and it might have been Katie Taylor about the how the women are taking over and that's the other aspect of this is that like we've just had we've had 12 to 18 months on the back of the 20 by 20 campaign where the women have taken over and they've achieved unbelievable things and every single one of them in their own way are breaking down barriers and uh, setting new trends and inspiring people and I don't know, it's just a, it is an absolutely sensational moment to be a young woman who is interested in sport and going, well, what am I going to do? Look at all these amazing role models I have. I don't know if you felt any of that or if you feel part of that or if it's in any way an inspiration to you, but um, you're definitely it's inspiring. Funny. It's funny because I think knowing those girls um, and like seeing them train and seeing them compete, it's almost like... <laughs> I almost feel like we've just had enough of being called women in sport. Like we are athletes and even I've had enough of being called a disabled athlete. Like I am an athlete. And that's one thing that I, I really noticed in Tokyo as well. Like the Olympic and Paralympic logos were side by side all the time. And we were just treated parallel to the Olympians. We weren't treated any differently. And it was just, we are athletes here to compete. And that's what us as women are doing. We're not, we're not talking about being women in sport. We're talking about we are high performance athletes and we're going to show you what we can do. I think that comes through loud and clear uh, from all of you as individuals. And I think um, it is a, a definitely a moment for for us as a country. Uh, it's, a, it's a kind of a, it's been, there's been an awakening over the last number of years. Um, I think the me footballers helped that. I know probably as a Dubs fan, you weren't too impressed by that. But hey, look, it's good for the it's good for the game. It's good for all of us. Ellen, congratulations. It's a remarkable achievement. And we're really looking forward to what happens over the next three years as well. Thank you so much. Thanks for the support, guys. It's Ellen Keane there, um, Paralympian gold medalist and uh, what a shiny gold medal it is of course a uh, brand ambassador for Allianz who Allianz Ireland have been a proud sponsor of Paralympics Ireland since 2010 and I've been a partner with Ellen for the last five years as well right we're a little bit late so we went a bit longer than that but uh, definitely worthwhile